Dee Dee. Okay, thank you. Errol, you have been a part of Barbados and Barbados history now, in the early 70s, maybe, and early that. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you became a Baha'i, how you heard about it. Uh, and <clears throat> I heard about the faith in 1970, early 1970, by a pioneer family that heard, happened to be my neighbors. And I attended some meetings over there and finally embraced the faith on the 30th of April, 1970. <laughs> nice. What, uh, we were talking earlier about what it was that attracted to you, the faith. What, what was really the principle that really grabbed you? I think it was the principle on the independent investigating the truth okay. that really, really attracted me. Okay. Was your family in favor of your becoming Baha'i? Well, they started out that way. But I think finally they have really been supportive and encouraging okay. of my Baha'i activity. Oh, that's nice. It's always nice to have your family support you on this sooner or later. Now, when you became a Baha'i, what kind of service were you pressed into immediately? I'm assuming you got the idea that you were supposed to do something as a Baha'i. Tell me about it. I think I was immediately pressed into service of teaching, you know, which, which um, was something I understood was, was part of being a Baha'i, one aspect was to serve, was to teach, give the word of the faith. So um, two years or so after becoming a Baha'i, I was immediately involved in teaching projects in service of the faith. Okay, what, um, tell us about the first teaching project you were in. Uh, the first project was in the summer of, of 1971 here in Barbados, and there were about a team of six, eight of us, we, you know, we, we spent six weeks on the island having kind of open-air type meetings with lots of music where we would give the faith not only in words but in music and that attracted many people to the faith during that project. Is that what they used to call mass teaching? Mass teaching, <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> All right. uh, was the project fun? Was it, was, it, was it exciting? Did the people like it? Yeah, I think it was very excited. I, I, I felt very excited about it, and I, I sense that same excitement, you know, as we move around the country. Okay. And I think, as I said, the music was really a vital part of, of, of the experience. Were the people open to the faith? They were very open, very open to the faith, very receptive. Was it different? I mean, things seem, I mean, you see people in their houses today, you know, with the television sets and this sort of stuff. How did it differ from there? Well, I think in the 70s, more, more people on the outside. There were less television, uh, less attraction, so to speak. They were always on the street, you know, assembles and groups and so forth. So it was easy to approach them. I think in these days, it was a little difficult because most of them were not on the streets like before. So it was very easy during those during the seventies in mass teaching to approach people, engage them in some type of conversation right on the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was not unusual for people to talk like that. Oh no, no. How long did that period of, of openness last? Can you can you, you have any idea? I would say around about ten years or so. Okay. You know, it was that type of receptivity. Then things shifted okay. after that. 